A while ago, we rolled out our new ABS to phase out our nice abs because that was way too bad. What is the difference? Well, not a huge amount, except new pretty colors. Except one thing, our new ABS melts in acetone. Old ABS didn't do this. It was geared towards printability and printing without an enclosure. And this was eight years ago when we got this filament. And back then, a lot of printers didn't have enclosures and heated chambers were still protected by patent. Now, things have changed now. Most normal sized printers have enclosures and heated build chambers are becoming more and more common. It's the de facto design almost. So we thought it fit to update our ABS to the modern world. So for this video, we are focusing on making the most out of our ABS. And we're gonna talk about the fun, melty ooziness that is acetone smoothing. First up, PSA. You're dealing with acetone here. It is nasty and flammable. And take it from me, from someone who has been careless with acetone in the past, you really, really wanna do this in a very well-ventilated area, preferably outside. Everything you see now is filmed with minimal exposure. If you see us with opened acetone bottles, we are finishing as quickly as possible, leaving the room until everything is dissipated, ventilated, and not returning until everything is safe. So here is a list of common symptoms of acetone exposure. Nausea, vomiting, headache, slurred speech, lightheadedness, diarrhea, skin irritation, tiredness, movement problems, swelling of the brain, low body temperature, slow breathing, constipation, your breath smells fruity, unconsciousness, how can you have constipation and diarrhea? When handling acetone, you really need to be careful. Use gloves always and use the right gloves. You're probably familiar with these guys. These are nitrile gloves. They're the most common ones you'll find in a workshop or a lab. And these are not good for acetone handling. What you want to use is something like natural latex or butyl rubber. Natural latex will suffice, but butyl rubber gloves would be the best thing to use. Also, as said before, acetone is very flammable, the, the vapors too. So if you're doing this, obviously no open flames, no devices that can spark. Do you have kids? If you do, keep them well away from this and their tiny grabby hands and soft brains. Okay, that was necessary. Let's get into it. So acetone smoothing is pretty easy with smaller items. We're just using this jar. We're gonna fill it up with acetone and we're gonna put this printed platform in it. Now. This is made of PCTG, which is very resistant to acetone. I don't want you to use PLA or obviously not ABS or ASA or HIPS uh, or nylon. Uh, PCTG would be the best material to use. Technically, you could use polypropylene as well, uh, but that's a little more difficult to print. So PCTG, really good. And you might notice that this is transparent. So acetone won't dissolve PCTG filament. Uh, Technically, it won't dissolve the PCTG, but it might dissolve whatever else is in the PCTG, such as dye. So that's why we're using transparent PCTG for this. You can actually make this yourself with the use of CAD. And when I say CAD, I mean Orca Slicer. But any metal or ceramic platform would be the best thing to do. So if you have that and it fits, use that. But if you're doing the printed platform, then just size it to however big your jar is, put it in. By the way, PCTG is resistant to acetone, but not exactly invulnerable. So if you're doing this a lot, heavy use over months, you probably might need to replace the platform eventually. It is important to note that as the surface of the print melts, it will bond to the platform. Now this works just fine for smaller items, but it is best suited for items where one side doesn't really need to be absolutely flawless as the side it rested on might not be perfect because it is imprinted with the platform texture if there is any. And when removing it, you might tear away some of the ABS, which will look like fibers, so it won't look that great. So just let it sit for an hour, maybe two, and when you come back, you should have a beautifully smooth part. The wait time required for smoothing depends on the ABS you use. For our ABS, I am happy to say that it is relatively slow acting. That doesn't sound good, but it is actually the best because then you'll be able to see when your part is done perfectly and not become a big melt mess. As you can see, the acetone will get rid of layer lines, but if you use a high enough layer height, it won't do this effectively, especially on dome-like parts. So print with low layer heights. If you really want to speed things up, I have seen people put their setups on a heated bed and turn it up to just a little bit above room temperature. Honestly, I'm a bit uncomfortable with this method because of safety concerns. But if you do this, please, please don't leave it 
unattended and do it outside and keep flammable children away. Okay, so that is for small, simple things. What about something bigger? The bigger the object is, the more volume of vapor you need to smooth it. And all of the sides need to be smoothed equally. So that means you either have to rotate the model or you need to circulate the air in a chamber so that everything is equally smoothed. Now there is a great design for a acetone smoother already and it works, so we're gonna use it. This is thing number 3497815 and there are two variations. One has a DC motor and one has a stepper motor. Now they both work in the same way. The motor turns your part and there's a little bit of acetone in the bottom of the jar which evaporates and should smooth all the sides of your model equally. There are two important things to note here. One is speed. You don't want your motor rotating at a thousand RPM. That would be bad. So if you want to use a regular DC motor, you need to use a speed controller of some kind. You need to use a potentiometer, a PWM supply, or just a trickle of voltage. The other thing is safety. So it's a motor, you're using electricity. These can spark, especially DC motors that have brushes built in. I don't like that. There is an easy solution to both of these problems, and that is a stepper motor. The stepper motors, you can control the speed very easily with a driver and board, and they're brushless, so there's less chance of sparks. You're watching a 3D printing channel. I'd wager you have a spare motor somewhere which you can use with an old board and a regular step stick. But you don't have to do that. You can get an Arduino board with a cheap stepper motor and stepper motor driver. You don't really need a full NEMA 17 for this. We sell all of these in the shop and actually Elegoo has kits which are really, really useful for little projects. We actually sell these Arduino Nanos in sets of three, but you can get a starter kit with an Uno, LCD module, steppers, drivers, sensors, buzzers, potentiometers, breadboards, fans, and a bunch of crazy crap for mad scientists. Now maybe this is overkill, but I just want the best when I'm smoothing with acetone and to stay safe too. We've modeled the design slightly to make it fit with our stepper motor and also our generic jar that we had lying around. We printed this all out of PCTG to keep it nice and resistant to acetone. You just need to print your model with a hole in the bottom so the shaft can go in, which you can do in Orca Slicer. You can use a metal shaft if you want to use this thing a lot, but keep in mind that the acetone will bond to it. It might be difficult to remove, in which case, print it so you can snap it off if it gets stuck. Everything bolts together with screws and then screws onto the top of the jar. The original design called for gluing the thing to the original lid, but we just printed a new lid as the jar lid that we got was not a polypropylene lid, so not acetone resistant. If you're not familiar with how to code on an Arduino, you can find a gazillion number of tutorials on YouTube. But if you're interested in the code that we use specifically, then you can find it here. Most important parts of the code here are the pins that you use and the speed. Edit as you see fit. When you're done that, upload your code on the Arduino and let it rotate. Check on it regularly until it is complete. Ah, look at that. Thanos, you handsome man. Your head is so smooth and shiny. By the way, if you do get a bit of white residue on the part that you smooth, then what you can do is use a Q-tip dipped in acetone and just brush on the model. Only brush in one direction. If you go back and forth, it might damage the surface. And then just let the acetone evaporate. And after a minute, it should be gone. Prusha also made a video with a slightly different approach where they used a huge IKEA box with a hole in the lid where a fan was placed that circulated the air around so they didn't need to rotate the piece. This is great for larger projects, but keep in mind the materials that they used. So the box that they used was made of polypropylene. This is resistant to acetone. If you use another different kind of plastic, you're gonna have issues. Also, the fan that they used was a Noctua fan. And Noctua fans, their frame is made out of PBT polymer and the actual blades are made out of liquid crystal polymer. Both of these are resistant to acetone. If you use a standard cheap fan, that's almost certainly gonna be made out of ABS. You're gonna have issues with that. There are downsides and considerations when it comes to acetone smoothing. So firstly, seeing as a lot of people are doing it these days, multicolor prints. You can print something out of ABS on the AMS or similar device and acetone smooth that. However, as was mentioned before, filament is not just a certain polymer. It's a certain polymer plus plasticizers plus dyes. So if you do try to smooth a multicolor part, it is possible that the colors will bleed into each other. So if you're doing this, just print something small in multicolor and try and smooth that and see if the colors bleed. Also, smoothing can warp your prints and 
chances are it's not going to be dimensionally accurate afterwards. As was mentioned before, you might also see a white residue building up on your smooth parts. This always reminded me of when you try to cure a resin printed part, but there's still a lot of isopropanol on it and you'll get this white residue. So I assume this has something to do with the acetone and the polymer not evaporating slowly enough and that residue is where the polymer chains kind of try to recombine but not fully and that's what you get. You might also think that because the layer lines are being smooth and melting into each other that the part becomes stronger. Well yes and no it's kind of complicated. So acetone smoothing will break up the polymer chains of ABS and then when it evaporates they will recombine but they won't recombine to the same extent that they had before. So Actually, if you do acetone smooth something, it will be weaker in terms of tensile strength, but its impact resistance and its layer adhesion will actually be stronger. If you want to learn more about this, then CNC Kitchen did a great video on it, and you can check it out up here. A long time ago, people would dissolve ABS in acetone to form a kind of slurry, and this was used for putting on borosilicate glass plates as a bed adhesive for ABS. That was a long time ago. People don't use glass plates anymore, but ABS slurry still works great as a glue because super glue can be horrendously expensive. So if you're working with ABS parts that need to be glued, use slurry. By the way, don't use ABS slurry on a PEI build plate. Not gonna go well. But if you do use super glue, then I have news for you because acetone can dissolve cured super glue. So always keep a little bit on hand if you do use a lot of super glue. And in addition to ABS, you can also use acetone to smooth ASA and hips too. I think this looks really awesome for miniatures and little busts like this. If you're printing something like a chess set, this is a really cool method to get it looking absolutely perfect. This isn't a quick way to make a crappy print look good. And you can just not have layer lines if you use a very low layer height and something like our matte filament. But this will make your prints look very produced, as if they're injection molded or cast. It's a very specific look that you can't really achieve with other printing techniques. Even resin printing doesn't really match this. There is one last method I want to share with you about acetone smoothing, and it's not really that well known. So beginners to acetone smoothing might think that it's easier and faster to just get your model and dip it in a bath of acetone. And this is generally not advised, and I'll show you why. So firstly, you got this white coating. That's not nice. And secondly, you've oversmoothed because acetone has pooled and it is bonding with the ABS and can't just be shook off. But what if I said this isn't such a bad idea, but with one small adjustment? This is IPA, commonly used in resin printing for cleaning your models and also for cleaning build plates and other such things. It barely reacts with ABS. But if you mix acetone and isopropanol and then dip your model in, leave for a while, and hey presto, no white coating, and it's smoothed. Repeat if necessary to get the desired level of smoothing. No white coating, no over smooth parts. I'm not really sure why this isn't done more often. Okay, so that one we did was kind of a bit over smooth. We did a 50-50 ratio with that, and that was a bit too much, I think. Some details were lost compared to the rotation method that we did. Although maybe I just prefer them lightly smoothed. I'm trying to get a good ratio for this, but so far one part acetone to two part IPA seems pretty good, pretty promising. The other downside is you need to let the solvent evaporate after removing it from the bath. And this takes a lot longer than the evaporation method because the solvent has sort of pooled on the surface. So you actually need to take the part out of the bath just before it's done because this solvent takes such a long time that it's still doing the smoothing process while it's evaporating. So that's sort of problematic. But of course, you don't need a stepper driver, motor kit, board, uh, a fan to do all this. So there are pros and cons. What do you guys think? Is this something that you would use on your prints? Are you interested in having a silky smooth injection molded look? Or are you happy with using MAC or Silk PLA with very low layer heights? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, you're very welcome to join our Discord server where there is talk about 3D printing on a daily basis. The link is down below in the description. We'll see you next time. Later.